Are you ready to rock the universe? Bow pick a bow bow. And what if Universal challenged Mickey's not so scary? This is episode 579 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hello, everybody. I am Michelle, your host for today. And thank goodness we got the whole fam damly with us. We got Chris. <laughs> the fam damly. The fam damly's here. What's yeah. Up? Hey, Chris and is we, back. And we got, we got Lily. Hey. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Lily. <laughs> we got Tracy. Hi, Lily. Oh, fam damly. Fam damly. You know what I mean? Trey, Trey? <laughs> Trey, Trey. Have you never heard of this, the, the, Fam Damley? Yeah. Aww. Not big here. You haven't either, Chris? Wow. Okay. Where's this from? I don't know where it started. It's I don't know, to be honest with you, but my family says it all the time. I think it's cute. Well, I'll incorporate it now. All right. Well, let's get back on the train tracks and start off with the little things from Seth. This is Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides, back with your first look for October of 2023 at all the little things new around the Universal Orlando Resort. We're going to begin where I usually start my Universal Orlando visits, at the Valet Parking Circle, where I am pleased to announce that the automated ticketing machines have finally reopened. If you prepaid for valet or you're a premier annual pass holder getting free valet parking, you no longer have to wait in line, but can once again just scan your parking ticket. Unfortunately, the credit card readers on the machine are having a little trouble, so be sure to bring cash for your tip. Inside Universal Studios Florida, Halloween Horror Nights 32 has been so popular that frequent fear passes are completely sold out as of the 28th of September. (laughs) And on the 27th of September, I got to attend a signing session at the Five and Dime store on Hollywood with the visual merchandise design team for the Tribute to Terror comic book. The second printing of this comic, which is a great collectible, is now available in the Tribute Store with a green cover. And right around the corner in USF, the Mocambo restrooms near the front of the park have finally completed their renovations. They've got nice, clean new tiles, but unfortunately the vintage monster movie posters are gone. In other refurbishment news, over in Islands of Adventure... The sign outside DeFoto's photo studio in Port of Entry has been removed. There are construction walls all around Circus McGurkis in Seuss Landing. And there are multiple construction walls in Marvel, with the snack stand near the pathway to Toon Lagoon having been removed entirely. Also in Toon Lagoon, there are once again refurbishment walls around the Popeye statue. Outside of the parks, over at the Royal Pacific Resort... Beer Fest is returning to Jake's on October 6th. Tickets are $65 per person, or you can get the VIP treatment with a souvenir glass for $90. And finally, I've gotten word about a minor change coming to early park admission. This won't affect most guests who get their early park admission by reserving an on-site hotel room or having an annual pass. But if you've previously gotten early park admission with a special single-day ticket sold through certain travel agents, that will no longer be an option in the future. All right, that will wrap up this little edition of Little Things. You can find me and the unofficial guide to Universal Orlando's 2024 edition at theunofficialguides.com. I'll be back in a few weeks, and until then, I'm keeping an eye on all those little things at the Universal Orlando Resort for you. And for Kayla Roebuck, when Seth says a few weeks, he means about four, because he won't be back in two Mm. weeks' time, because he's off traveling. Sorry, Kayla. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so that early park admission single-day ticket caused a ruckus in the travel agency world. Really? Um, Yeah, because it's it's been kind of a big benefit for travel agents, because... Um, if you're not staying on property, especially like if you're for a lot of our Disney clients, they just want to come in for a day. If they book those tickets through us as opposed to go into the website, they still get early park admission 
by booking through us, they wouldn't get that by booking on the website. So it's been kind of a booking perk for us. Um, yeah. And they literally took that away like and announced it same day. So a lot of travel agents were upset. It doesn't, didn't really affect me much because I try not to have people that just come to Universal for one day. I yeah. really try to convince them to do its own vacation. Um, but a lot As of people had like clients on the fence about, you know, hey, let me just hold off on buying my Universal ticket um, until we're for sure which day we're going to go, blah, blah, blah. Well, now they lost that benefit and... It was anyway, just a big, big ordeal, but it made sense because there was a lot of confusion across team members from different departments and at the gates where people would show up saying, I've got early admission, but they didn't have a room key. And sometimes team members didn't know what the heck was going on. And it, so, I mean, it makes sense, but a little warning would have been nice. That's all. Yeah. It's again, little things that Universal seem to be doing that uh-huh. I don't like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind concerning. of a weird one. Mm. I mean, it wouldn't affect me at, at all because I've never bought a single day ticket to Universal in my life. Exactly. 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 Well, I, mean, I, I don't care about it at all because I hear early park and I just literally blank out. But for people who do go early, that's, <laughs> Those that's weird kind of a weird one. I mean, it's a nice <laughs> well, little perk. And just mm. like Tracy with Japan, if mm. you're just going for one day yeah. and you're trying to squeeze it all in, then yeah, you're going to use that yeah. early park admission. You want every every um, second. So it, it really mainly affected all of those Disney travel agents that are really focused yeah. on Disney. My, my biggest focus is Universal. So, <laughs> no, Michelle, you... Were, you, were you just giving like a little teaser trailer no. for next week? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, by yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. Universal, yeah. I know you're listening. Um, Chris requests LPA, like late park admission. Oh, he would was, like yeah. you to keep I thought, the, was, I thought it was some sort of like beer. He would like you to keep the park open an hour <laughs> after everyone else's yes. fucking. Yes. Oh my god, that yes. That would be something I yes. guess. Could Disney yes. so Disney used to do yeah, it. They had extra magic they hours. Still do. No, they, they still, still do, do it. it it's only the, so they have early park admission for all hotel guests, but the deluxe resort guests get access to the nighttime extra magic hours. Because that used to be like when we stayed on Disney property in two thousand and nine, we? we did Animal Kingdom and we got in Which there from like five o'clock till about seven. It was dark. Mm-hmm. That park is so much nicer at night. Also it has yeah. no lighting at all. Yeah, so it's it pitch was black. So cool to be <laughs> yep. in Animal Kingdom yeah. after dark. It was awesome. It- it used to be like the schedule. It used to be all over the place. Sometimes it would be an early yeah. park admission. Sometimes it'd be a late and they've changed that completely. Um, but damn, <laughs> if Universal did nighttime extra, I don't not yeah. extra magic hours, but next nighttime extra hours. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Look, Universal don't even keep the parks open after dark, to be fair. Well, we understand why. I don't understand but why. The people who I don't. Live, the people who live in the, that area know there's a park there. They, they keep Halloween Horror Nights open until 2 a.m., so that is I'm not saying, a valid I excuse. I, but also, no. the people who, are moving, who move into those houses know what's there. Well, exactly. They know what they're taking yeah. on. So, yes. well, and most of them move there because they work there or they love being close yeah. to the park. So, go on, Chris. Go on. Get I, in. I, I, I say this out of love, but if they want to charge similar prices to the rat down the street, then we're going to want some of those similar benefits as well. Yes. Right. Yeah. Better benefits, to be honest. Yeah. Because it ain't cheap to go to Universal anymore. No, it's no. not. I've had many conversations with many people over the next, uh, over the last. Well, since we came back, to be fair, and I am slightly concerned. I'm concerned now. We've already been off air talking about next year, whether Tracy and I will be coming out, and there's a lot of variables. Yeah, there's a lot. And at that point, but just cost-wise of, like, if we come out for Horror Nights, you've got to factor in Russia Fear Passes, plus probably an RIP tour. Mm-hmm. The conversation we had with Brian Law over at Universal Family Podcast yesterday, which will probably be out on Thursday, talking about where the tipping point for RIP to yeah. us is and it's getting very close to that point for for the both of us at this point plus mm-hmm. you've got to factor in your um annual pass renewals like i said mine cost me 500 dollars just to renew and that was with 20 percent off it's becoming a very expensive trip yeah um and then start to factor in epic universe when that opens i'm it, we're reaching a point where it's getting a bit too rich for my blood if i'm honest mm-hmm. The Epic Universe thing is a, a very big question mark that I think a lot of people have on their mind yep. when it comes to, you know, planning. Because look at where prices are now. Yeah, you're going to introduce an entirely new state of the art giant park mm-hmm. that you know you can charge whatever you want for it as well. Exactly. 
It's like opening up an, another a full park. So what's the cost? You know, that's that's yeah. that's the big we're, scary. We're question. nearing. We are definitely nearing Walt Disney World's price points for sure. Oh, and listen, I'm I'm okay with it as. Yeah, I, I'm okay with it as long as the value's there. Yes. But the yes. moment they're not giving you that value, they're just raising prices. True. Very true. Mm. Well, I think that's that's really the question, right? I mean, even going back to to Horror Nights, where we, you know, we discussed this a bit, and I know Seth mentioned something else here I'd like to discuss as well. Yes. But Russia Fear passes, right? You go yeah, back a few years, years uh, and uh, Russia Fear, I was paying 100 bucks, right? Absolute bargain. Even up until recently, what it was 120? 129 when you paid more last than one year. night. Yeah. Still a fantastic bargain. Yeah. 40% price increase uh, increase to 180. And yes, if I go two nights, I'm still getting some value there, but it, it is starting to inch closer to that, you know, am I doing this and going so much just so I can try to justify mm-hmm. this? Yes. Or am I actually going because I want to? And obviously yeah. I do mm-hmm. want to go to Horror Nights, but I'm yeah. just kind of throwing but out no, this. I get that. You, know, you got to think about that with every aspect of this, right? Like, oh, I spend, if you're a Disney pass holder, and I know, you know, some that are pass holders that don't go that frequently. Mm. And one uh, one of my good friends that literally dropped their annual pass because they love that park to death, right? Like they eat, live and breathe and all that. But they told me I it doesn't make any financial sense for us to keep this pass if we don't go X amount of times a yeah. year. Yeah, and exactly. we just sometimes can't. There's no point. It's a little thing like Tracy and I talked about for the longest time of why we never got the freestyle cups. Because like, am I drinking to get value out of what I've paid for mm. the freestyle cup, or am I drinking because I want to? You want that and, drink, yeah. yeah. And there was also days where we went in, and it was like, do you know what? It's past a certain time. It's not worth. But no, I'm saying it's like we, we, that comes into yes, it as well. But we I'm just saying we never used days. to get them because no, no. it was like, am I gonna? I'm going to end up having a load of drinks, which isn't a bad thing, but I'm doing it but then to make really sure want... I get the value out yes. of the cup. And it's that much soda healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because right. I noticed the days when I was like full soda days, I was not okay. No. And I also wouldn't then get the coffee, which I'd rather have the coffee, I'll be quite honest. I think the argument right. about the Russia Fear Pass is, Chris, f- for somebody like you... Why don't they do that? F- what? What? A coffee version Unlimited of coffee. a free... Yeah. I, don't I would pay for idea. that. I'm sure you would. Um, the Russia Fear Pass is for you. It doesn't make any difference. You buy that pass, you're going to go as many times as you're going to go anyway. Like You would yeah, always right. go as many times in September as you would anyway, mm. regardless of how much you've paid for that pass. It's just... Correct. I mean, yeah. Uh, is yeah. that pass worth that price? Like I say, if you listen to... The, I'll give him a, a plug again. This, this week's Universal Family. I don't know mm. whether you talked about it with him, Chris, but I know we did when we were we on did. that episode about where that tipping point of of um RIP to us is and it's getting very close to mm-hmm. it for me where i think we i think we settled on anything over 400 dollars is a conversation yeah anything 450 That's 500 hilarious. is hilarious 450 yeah. was the number that we threw out there as well, yeah, well we think, said I think oh, was, like I, it's a conversation yeah. yeah we said 450 is a probably a probably not and anything Anything four fifty is a four, hard conversation. Four hundred to four fifty was a conversation, and yeah. four fifty is mm, I, I mean, don't know. I understand. That's funny. Also- so we we discussed it too, and so we had an interesting take, Kevin and I. Um, my take was my tipping point would be five hundred, but only that if there was too. more value added. Yeah. So I said, for instance, I would love to have, uh, you know, a drink voucher for two or three drinks for yes. the night. I would love to have. Um, Lombards, you know, that bar over there open with a, with a food buffet that's still open at midnight when I'm really wanting food again instead of like Cafe La Bamba closes at 10. Yeah. 11. Um, 11 now. I would also like to skip the food lines. If you could let me skip the food lines during my RIP, I would pay yeah. $500. Yeah. I still don't know whether I'd pay five hundred dollars because then you're still paying extra Here. to f- buy food. But also, I would I would like to have I would like to check in earlier so we can actually eat a meal in there you know eat our fill yeah the because kicking... it was very quick yes you're right you know, you're losing time at halloween horror nights to be sat in cafe la bamba well not even mm-hmm. just in that check-in in area the check-in the area front. yeah there. Well, it was agree. the first time they gave us food in that check-in area the way they did this year yeah like it was mm. Much it was just, more it was food, just water last time because we pointed out yes that we didn't get yeah. scare actors in in la bamba no. this time either 
I mm. don't remember. Chris, do you yep. remember if we did last year? If we got what? Scare actors. You weren't there. Scare actors. Well, I know we did it 2019. Oh. 2019 we did. We did because there were... Because it was scaring the shit out of Michelle. I did, an, I did an RIP last year, just All not right. with you. Yeah. And yes, we did have scare actors because one of them was um, messing with Kenneth a lot. We did. I don't remember having it was, scare it actors. It was his friend. Chris? Yeah. Did we? I don't remember, to be honest with you. I don't I remember don't. either. If you can tell me where yeah, we, we sat. I know where we sat the first time. It was like in the little side room. And then we came back later. I don't remember there being scare, we scare we, actors because we, we had a whole conversation about Super Nintendo World with Rich at the time. Anyway. That's um, interesting. Yeah. Maybe it was an opening weekend thing. I don't know. But when Maybe. we went with Sonia on hers, we did have scare actors in there because the scare actor that was messing with Kenneth was his friend. We weren't there all the weekend. Yeah. Weren't you? Nope. This year is the only time I've yeah. ever been. Last year, this year was the first time he's. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I think I went in October. Anyway. But going back to what Chris was going to bring up about the frequent fear passes being sold out this mm. year, they're obviously not hurting for a price increase. No. Well, again, going back to the conversation, uh, I don't know if you remember about how they price out all these tickets, where the they release individual night tickets months in advance they gather the data for those tickets and then based off of how many ticket sales there are they will price out their multi-night tickets okay so the multi-night 180 is because there were so many single nights sold so they weren't hurting for people to come hence they raised the price to try and um, stop right. people now buying selling. yeah okay yeah so so they gauge they, they use that data to price out everything else and now those you know all those passes are sold out which it's a heavy year, not just because it's, you know, amazing houses, but you have two ginormous franchises and IPs with ginormous followings. So you're having thousands upon thousands of people that are going to this event who don't care about Horror Nights, who don't care about anything else. Yeah. Yep. In fact, it's their first time ever going. I just want to see Vecna. I just want to see Ellie. Mm -hmm. I just love this IP so much. So I think this is a very, it's a, it's a different year. Cause I don't, I mean, I, I can't think of a year that's had two giant relevant current IPs as much as Stranger no, Things. No, probably Last not. Of Us. Right. Walking Dead doesn't really count because that started dying yeah. off after a while. So uh, these are huge. But those people you're yeah. talking about, are they buying frequent fear passes? Probably not. Well, but that's also going to affect those other passes. Because remember, your frequent fears, your rush of fears, you have to set a starting date now. You can't go prior to the start date that you put in there. And as they are selling even more individual night tickets, they're like, well, damn, we don't we have can't to sell really anymore. sell this frequent fear yeah. and just cut those off and we'll just keep on selling these other tickets that are way more expensive. So mm -hmm. I think that's... I think that's where it, it became like this. Yeah. Yeah. The single night. That's what I told you, Chris, too, when you were asking about upgrading, which I'm assuming you yes. found out that you cannot. I, I did. Yeah. Cause I literally two days before them putting in this sold out thing, Alex and I were looking to upgrade our tickets because we were going to go back in October. And it was cheaper for us to just upgrade than buy an, indiv an individual two nights. Um, yeah. And literally the day after it was sold out, I called uh, Universal and yeah, even if you had previous passes, you're not grandfathered and they're just sold out. They will not sell it to okay. you. Okay. Because yeah. the interesting thing this year as well, I think I brought it up on Universe Family yesterday, that this year they're actually selling unlimited express passes on the gate as well. I don't know how much they are. I saw it was like only an extra 40 bucks or something to upgrade it from your regular express to unlimited. Jesus, then you do if that. Have, that's, yeah. that's weird. Oh, dude, it's too uh, well. The the prices I've been seeing in, on all the different Horror Nights groups is like two fifty for an unlimited. For an unlimited, which I, I brought up as as a talking point. So going back to, is the RIP worth it? I came at it from a different angle. If you look at it and go, how much is an Express yes. unlimited yeah. at night? And then how much the extra for RIP? What am I getting? I'm getting food. I'm getting, you know walk straight to the front so yeah. that's a different conversation there i, I think the value but is still there. twice the price when that yeah becomes too big it's then now it's a different conversation yeah yeah interesting I'm yeah, sure because even with express like my agency when we did that one night um we all had express and even with the express it was hard to get it all in 
That's what she said. I knew it was coming. I was just waiting. (laughs) That's what she said. said. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, Yeah, I mean, I I appreciate that worldwide costs have gone up and things, but the the unfortunate thing is people's salaries haven't gone up in relation to everything else that's going up in the world. And that doesn't seem to be getting factored in anywhere that no, they're a what? business at the end of the day. I mean, they're, they're all, it doesn't matter because for any person yeah. that can't go, there's 10 that can, 10 new ones that are going. It's, mm-hmm. you know. It just worries me. Like I say, if we, it, like, I love Horror Nights so much, but it's potentially going to get to a point where it's like, I can't afford to come out at that time because I can't go out in September and not go to Horror Nights. And then you're talking about your tickets, like, Rush, say we did Russia Fear for two of us, plus an RIP tour on top of that, plus maybe you want one night with Express. That's an expensive expensive trip on top of your flights your hotel your spending money your annual passes and everything else that goes with it it's a mm-hmm. very very expensive trip and it it does worry and at me. that point lee it might be cheaper for you guys not to do annual passes it might be cheaper for you unless you get the 15 month one where it'll cover you yeah for the next year um it might be cheaper for you to do one of those uk tickets yeah i have already started looking at the difference in prices for like a two-week ticket from but i like the perks of having an annual pass though i don't get any but you're always with but somebody that has one though like when okay, we went to mythos you lounge. wouldn't have been able to get the fritters if we didn't have annual passes we wouldn't be able to go well, in the would, lounge as long as one has it i mean i think they. i would. don't know I... <sighs> but yeah i like going in the lounge they didn't check my ap before i got my Burgers, I like being burgers. an annual pass holder, but anyway, it's going to be an interesting conversation come the next two years, I think. Yep. Yeah, I, I foresee us having a full episode just breaking everything. Agreed. Down. Actually, I know. well, we basically just did. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And, well, me and Michelle haven't. We haven't. We need to get into our conversation that we had in the Uber back from Mickey's Not So Scary on the air. Yeah. Is that how we got back in an Uber? Yeah. Yes. I have yeah. no idea. No, I know you don't. I remember getting the ferry. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about in the little things? Nah. All right. Um, no. No. All right. Well, then, Tracy, why yes. don't you tell us about something fun that we can do for our listeners? Well, obviously, it's Halloween season. It's killing me. I'm not there at the moment. <laughs> well, keep really telling you. Keep out. telling and you. Apparently, everything's changed on, quite now, a buddy. lot as well. Don't. Don't. You know, I mean, you know. Get a flyer at work on a Friday. We'll fly out the Friday night. I haven't got the holidays left. <laughs> I'll be your Juan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So obviously we've we've got all the all the fun of you know trying to decide which is the best house and fighting with each other. So in order to help us do that, by the um, way, Chris, sorry just to jump in. I hope you didn't give anything away when you were on the Universal Family yesterday. They were asking us about houses, and I'm like, I am being very diplomatic here. I am not giving away what I have. I didn't either. No. Good. good, good. Oh, I literally said what everybody said is there's two at the bottom, and then the rest are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, Tracy. That's okay. That's okay. I just need to make um, sure my team are on the right track. Uh, yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, so, yes, we want you to be involved with ranking the Halloween Horror Nights houses. So, where have you been? That really helps if you go. Uh, when you I mean, been, you can make them up if you want. You can if you want, but, you know, what's fun in that? That's what Tracy did with the hype list. And then send I mean, you could. Yeah. Please don't. No. Uh, so, yes. So, rank your houses uh, in reverse order from 10 to 1. 10 being your least favorite, 1 being your most favorite. <laughs> I was gonna, I'm going to bleep that. I'm going to oh. edit this. You could just do 10 being <laughs> and 1 being something else. <laughs> 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 Not... <laughs> Yeah, one being anything but... Yeah. Um, yeah, so get that list sorted and get it sent in to us at podcast at com, and we will add it to the tally and at the end of the season we will see who's the best and who's the worst. Chuck yeah, I love doing this every year. I actually had someone reach out to us today asking if we were still doing them and like, yeah, we are. You've got till... Um, let's give it like a couple of days after the end of the event to get them in, mm-hmm. so we get everybody. I mean, everybody's everybody's list tend to tend to change too throughout the year. So I'll be there again next week. So I'm curious to see if my list stays the same. Well, mine will stay the same because I'm not going back out again. True. Sad. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on and talk about a different event. Yeah. Sadly. 
because yeah. I'd rather talk about Halloween Horror Nights all the time. But Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about the antithesis of Halloween Horror Nights, Rock the Universe. We're going to have to send someone to report Absolutely. this. Chris, do you fancy going to see this, like going for this weekend and cover it for the podcast? Is it this weekend? Not this weekend. Oh, uh, it's in January. But you know what? Possibly. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I'm down. Anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss details offline. Yeah. When is it? So January. We'll find uh, out in a minute. End of January. That's Let, what let's I was Chris, doing. Chris, why don't you tell us when it is? <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Actually, you know, exactly. Yes. Him. <laughs> uh, you know, bring out your Bibles and slap on your let, uh, let go and let God t-shirts and have, uh, we've got an announcement for Universal because uh, the lineup for Rock the Universe, the Christian Music Festival, is taking place January 26 and 27 of next year. Um, the weekend kicks off on Friday night with performances by Grammy-nominated rock band We the Kingdom and Grammy Award-winning rapper The Cray and more. Uh, the festival continues Saturday night with performances by Dove, award-winning band, Casting Crowns, uh, Grammy-nominated singer Phil Wickman. Wickham? Wickham. Sorry if I'm butchering these names a little bit. Um, Grammy Award-winning singer Brandon Lake and more. Uh, for the full weekend lineup, go to rocktheuniverse.com. I got to interview one of the performers. Was it last year? The yes, year before? I, I was I was either busy or something. Matthew West, Grammy nominated. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who he was. was John interview. Self helped me along. He was. Uh, beyond the main stage performances, Rock the Universe attendees can immerse themselves in a weekend full of inspiring worship experiences, including a powerful Sunday morning service to wrap up the faith filled weekend. Fans can keep the music flowing in a dedicated fan zone, featuring live performances from up and coming acts and autograph sessions with participating bands and artists. That's pretty cool. I think we said this before. If this is your thing, it's yeah. awesome. Like, what better place yeah, to do for it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, look, I've I've literally gone to uh, Disney. Used to have one called Night of Joy. Yes, I think it was called. And did this because I used to go to youth group and everything. I had a blast as a kid. You're there with all your friends yeah. and riding rides. It's it's a good time. Yeah, and, and you get music. All right. Um, tickets to Rock the Universe also include access to Universal Studios Florida's most thrilling attractions during the event. Fans can take a break from the music and experience the newest addition to the park, Minion Land, on Illuminations Avenue. Uh, featuring the groundbreaking new attraction, Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast, and also Rip Ride Rocket. Uh, Escape from Gringotts, Race to New York, starring Jimmy Fallon, Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, and Revenge of the Mummy. Pretty good, decent that's, lineup. I mean, it's pretty much everything yeah. that's open during Horror Nights. Uh, yeah. yeah. Apart from Minion Blast. Hmm? Yeah. I'd just be riding Minion Blast all night. <laughs> yeah. Because it is yeah. the best attraction in the park. I wonder if... <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's all right. I've already had Grace Wiley. <laughs> you tell him, Grace. Tell me off. She's uh. like, and you had a go at me for having Stranger Things as my number one house. I think that <laughs> Minion Blast being your number one's a much harder take. Like, oh, I don't yeah. care. I disagree. <laughs> awesome. <sighs> well, if Christian music is your thing, then this sounds like a great event for you. Yeah. You just need to do an event for every month of the year. Like, we need to come up with other ones in between Rock the Universe, Mardi Gras, Horror Nights, the holidays. Well, I could do something for New Year. Well, they used to do the summer January, concerts. They, they, do. Do. they do the New Year. What is it? Eve. It's New Year's Eve. Yeah, they do. Do. And to be um, fair, Mardi Gras lasts like 10 months. True. They so. used to do the summer concert series as well, though, didn't they? They did. Years ago. Yeah. It was a long time ago. I mean, they also used to have way more Mardi Gras concerts, but that's a different conversation Bum -bum altogether as well. I do think we're just going to have three seasons in the park and they're just going to like spill into each other. Have pancake day, but spread it over like that's a month. That's only here. I do you guys hey, celebrate... Pancake day? Ash yeah. when Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday, no, no before Lent. No, I thought it was like a Denny's thing you were talking about. No, no. So pancake Me days, too. pancake days, <laughs> day. Shrove Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. So it's to get rid of all the eggs and milk and flour in the all house before Lent. Before you, oh, okay. Yeah. So everyone has so make, pancakes, but they're more like crepes. 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 All right. Yes. All right, Miss Tracy. Yes. Let's get back to some Producers Club birthdays. No, it's been so long. I know. Wow. You only did them two weeks ago. Yeah. Slept since then. It's been so long. 
It still feels like she just got back from Japan, it, it, okay? It, it does. I mean, not not Japan. Well, that too. Well, that Korea. too. Korea. That too. Yeah. Yes. For you, maybe. <laughs> Asia. You were back from Asia. I can go back. It's not a problem. It's not a hardship. It is a problem. As long as I can go to Orlando, I'm going back over to Horror Nights. See you, okay, I'll see you go. next week. I told you, I've been you to go. <laughs> okay, let's let's crack on with some birthdays, shall Cheaper we? Cheaper when there's only one of me. There's only one of you. There's only one of me. Yeah. Well, not well, if the other you... one is in Beijing at the same just, time. So how many just times have you brought two of you? <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> how many of him is there? Well, there's only one of me. How many said. trips were there? Uh, two or three? <laughs> Thank goodness there's only one. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd like to see two because I'd like to see how he'd put up with himself. I'd love to see what this podcast would be like if it was just four of me. I might just <laughs> oh, do that. I might oh, record oh. an episode of me doing all the parts, but like as different people, <laughs> not as said. me. Like I'll record them all separately and put it all together. So I'm not that doing it. That could actually be funny. <laughs> Tracy, it could be it's terrifying. It's club's birthdays. Come on. <laughs> I, no, I want to hear, hear the other two uh, accents now. If that's me. I can't do a Southern Bell. Oh, I'm, I'm a Bell? I thought it was talking about Chris. Talking about Chris. <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> I think she missed that. <laughs> I think you're lucky. Oh, yeah, I got that one. Thing. I appreciate it, though. <laughs> anyway, Tracy, please, yes. birthdays. I'm trying. Get me out of this hole. I'm trying. Okay. That's what she said. <laughs> 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 okay, we're going to kick this off with an October 3rd birthday. And that is the amazing Devin Coleman's birthday. Happy birthday, Devin. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then on October the 6th, it is the gorgeous Jamie Schiller's birthday. Happy birthday, Jamie. Happy birthday, Jamie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then we're going to follow that up on the 12th. With the stunning Laurie Cannon's birthday. Happy birthday, Laurie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Laurie. And the following day, October the 13th. Is it a Friday? That's my favorite day, Friday the 13th. Yeah. I hope it is a Friday in spooky season. It is. Is it? Awesome. Yeah, it is a Friday. That is so cool. Mm-hmm. Happy Lucky Friday master. the 13th. Spooky birthday to birthday twins. Not literal twins. I always have this confusion. Uh, first up, we have the fantastic Grace Nalbers. Happy birthday, Grayson. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, bud. Oh. And the birthday twin here is the inimitable Ron Viskowski's birthday. Happy birthday, Ron. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, my favorite Ron. Happy birthday. I've been following <laughs> their exploits at Universal this past week. Oh, Yes. There's been some fun going on there. Ugh. We had lots of fun planning that trip. I'm sure. It's fun watching it unfold. I hate it. Well, that's just because you're jealous. Yeah. Yeah. So the following day, on the 14th, the Saturday, um, it is the marvellous Cody Whitecamp's birthday. Happiest birthday, Cody. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Ha- happy birthday, Mr. Whitecamp. And, oh, we have more birthday twins. Two very nice people here. Oh, yes. Two of the best. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Uh, October the 15th sees the birthdays of the legend, the man, the one and only John Tyler's birthday. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, John. Hey. (laughs) I knew it. And then last but by no means least... Recently, my own personal angel. Oh, yes. Yes. So wishing a very, very happy birthday and a speedy recovery. recovery yes. She's just had an op to the gorgeous, the lovely, the wonderful Crystal King. Happy birthday, Crystal. Happy birthday, Crystal. Happy birthday, Crystal. Happy birthday. So as usual, wishing you all very happy birthdays with lots of cake and presents and lots of hugs, whether you like them or not. Yes. Hugs, not kicks. Yes. Sweet. All right. Let's take a quick break and hear from the world's best travel agency, our sponsor, Port Key Vacations. Man, we need a vacation. Oh, I got this. Whoa, that's awesome. But I was thinking something a little more adventurous. Okay, how about this? 
Yes! Woo! And how about some relaxation from Mama? Oh, perfect. How did you do that? Easy. Port Key Vacations. For your next vacation, let Port Key Vacations take away all the guesswork and stress of planning. From air and hotel to theme park tickets and everything else in between, they've got you covered. Just visit PortKeyVacations.com and touch the Port Key to get started with your free, no obligation quote request. With just one touch, and Port Key Vacations will magically take you wherever you want to go. All right. Welcome back. Hello, everybody. We are back and we are going to jump into a bow. Pick a bow, bow from Kirby. Bow. Pick a bow, bow. Bow. Pick a bow, bow. Bow, bow, baby. Hi, this is Kirby and Kendra. We just ate at Ben the Bow. We had the kimchi fried chicken, the shrimp, and the brisket. What did you think of the kimchi? I would give the kimchi a four out of five. I thought there was a lot of flavor to it. You know, I, I was satisfied with every bite. I'm going to give the kimchi a three and a half. It was good. There was a lot of sauce, and that's kind of honestly all I tasted. I really didn't get any chicken or uh, some of the other toppings. Then we'll move on to the shrimp. I'm going to give the shrimp a four. I thought it was very reminiscent of what you'd get in a shrimp taco, which I like. So I liked all the flavors there. And I will give the shrimp a three and a half. Um, I really enjoyed it. There was the, it was super flavorful. The sauce that was on the shrimp really made it a good little treat. And then finally the brisket. I'm going to give the brisket a three and a half. The meat was tender. It was juicy um, and not tough. I really like spice and heat with jalapenos and I had those fried jalapenos were a nice touch. However, I really wanted mm -hmm. it to be more heat from those jalapenos. And I would give the brisket a two. I just thought it just tasted like regular brisket nothing real special about it all right thank you and we'll catch you next time so we've said we got one left i said we had two mr craig lucas i'm gonna call you out sir because it'd be buzzing now it's like three episodes on a row i get a shout out uh i will play their clip at some point if you want to hear a load of inebriated scousers <laughs> uh, bend the bow trying bows but not actually rating them then have I got the clip for you? <laughs> I need to hear this. Um, I need the, to hear this the too. The whole thing's eight minutes long. Oh, my goodness. I edited it down to about three and a half. Maybe I should leave it in. It's, yeah. I think we should save that for our closing <laughs> of, of that segment. Okay. That's a great idea. Although John wanted Love to that. be the last one, so I might have to fight with him over it. Oh, that'd be the penultimate one then. It is funny, though. Yeah. Chris, tell us what we have up next. <laughs> That's what what she we said. have up next is probably... <laughs> oh, my God. That was a really bad way to introduce this. It was, you're right. Yeah, <sighs> it, it, it's it's very on the nose, let's say that much. So okay. um, don't forget that next year we will begin our new listener interactive topic, which is <laughs> which stick gets my lick? Lick my stick. Now, similar to... <laughs> That's what it's going to end up being called. What, I didn't know you stick? had a Yeah, that's what Tracy's going to end up. Tracy. Yeah. Well. Lick my stick. All you right. can't you judge know. anybody nowadays, well, can you? <laughs> similar to Bow Pick a Bow Bow, you're going to go to Freeze Ray Pops in Minion Land and try however many, which means all, of the Freeze Ray Pops as you like and record yourself rating each of them out of five. Now, we're going to be using the same rating system here, which well, one is a bleh, and five is a... Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, Joe. And send them to us at podcasts at uuopodcast.com. And we will begin this new interactive topic in the new year. So get yours in. That's what she said. So we have plenty to keep us going. I was saying we've already got one in, Chris, because we actually saw that getting recorded. You remember by that bunch of idiots sat oh in my Minion God. Cafe? Yes, that was hilarious. He said that in? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. I can't, I can't wait, wait to, to actually play it. It's great. funny. You know what I honestly can't wait the most for is a intro song from John Tyler. He is already working on it. He has already tasked himself to say he 
he um for how much he got people to laugh over bow picker bow bow he's struggling to know how to outdo bow picker bow bow now so he's but he's on the i mean i don't know that you can Oh, he, I'll do it. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> this man, I will say, he 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 puts his time, dedication, and effort into these things. So I have oh, faith yeah. in you, John. Yeah, he oh, is, yeah. Uh, I have I have full faith in you. He is on it. I know that much. That's great. Awesome. Uh, speaking of interactive topics, we reached out to the producers club and asked them if Universal were to counter HHN and compete with Mickey's Not So Scary by hosting an extra ticketed event in Islands of Adventure on non-HHN nights that was a Halloween event aimed at families, families, not kids, what would you like to see them do? So let's go through their responses. I was struggling because there's no news out there, and I suddenly thought this could be interesting to get the listeners yeah. involved. Yeah, this is cool. So yeah, Now, with that being said, before we jump into that, yeah. okay, families, not kids. So... Are we saying that not so scary is geared geared towards kids, right? Yeah, I think so. Or is that geared towards families? Uh, well, no, I think it's geared towards families too. Maybe. But what I was saying, I didn't want it to be a kids event. I wanted it to be a family event. Just a family friendly event. Yes. So anybody could enjoy it. So yeah. not an event okay. I didn't know if it was like something separate altogether. Yeah. All right. No, cool. Got it. First up, we have a response from Corey Hall. He says Jack O' Lanterns galore out front of IOA entrance. Event themed lighting on the lighthouse. Cool. Characters all throughout port of entry welcome you, welcoming you to the celebration. Cool. Each land is decorated for the event. Special characters you may not see. Uh, I'm assuming that means you may not see in like daytime nothing, would be yeah. villains and Marvel Potter characters other than Death Eaters, Seuss characters, etc. Um, a lagoon show. Yes, please. And of course, trick or treat stations in each land. We've been begging out for a lagoon show in Islands oh, of Adventure for ever. forever. Mm hmm. It needs it badly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Who would be the villain in Zeus, Tracy? That's an interesting. Uh, Dr. Zeus. Uh, <laughs> that would be kind of cool. <laughs> the, lumber, the lumberjack? <laughs> okay. I can see it. Is he the lumberjack? What's he called? It just, the it, Wansler, not the Wansler. No, the Wansler, yeah. Yeah, the Wansler would yeah, be. Yeah, the Wansler. Um, mm -hmm. Technically, the cat in the hat. He's a <laughs> isn't he? A thing, one of the thing, too. I mean, I know he cleans up after mm -hmm. himself, but he still <laughs> everything up in the first place. I think it'd okay. be cool just to have creepy, like, creeped yeah. out Doctor Seuss characters in general. Yeah. I mean, but I know not, that wouldn't be allowed. No, and that's the, that's your issue with a lot of this stuff, is they wouldn't be allowed to do any of this stuff in the land. 100% not Marvel. No. No. It's just such a shame, because you've obviously got, like... um the zombie episode of what if with like zombie yep. captain america and that would be so cool and i know they do it they've done it in disneyland uh -huh. with zombie captain yes. america but there's no way disney would allow universal to do it no no yep well um we have stephanie grant she wrote in uh number one special food and drink options in each land absolutely uh number two is allow costumes within reason yep mm -hmm. uh, number three off offer character meet and greets Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep, yep. Uh, number four, multiple candy locations within each island, like trick-or-treating. Mm -hmm. um, five, they could offer something similar to the Christmas tree search, but Halloween-related. Which they kind of do. do yeah. yeah, Yeah, the little boo they, thing this year. They do it, but... Hmm. Yeah, I can see them just... Ex well, they don't they have stuff in islands as well? Right? For the little boo trick-or-treat. I, trick -or -treat. I actually the, think so, because can't you buy that... that booklet thing from um yeah you can you can buy it from the all hallows eve boutique yeah. too yes oh, of course yes i gotta look it up yes i think it's because it's spread out now through city walk islands yes, and is. universal yes. so okay totally doable uh where were we uh park number six uh park would obviously need to be decorated for halloween mm. yep uh seven offer every or most attractions within islands yeah uh number eight nothing scary gory yep i'm um, all family friendly yep and number nine is price should be comparable to Mickey's not so scary Halloween parade. Is that what party? Party. Yeah. Party. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, but I think 50 to $75 would be worth it. Lower wait times uh, in the park after dark uh, would be fun. It would definitely would be more to than 50 that, to 75. I would never see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, would be amazing. Be I would do that in a heartbeat just yes. to be able to be in the parks at nighttime. Yeah. Uh, Mickey's not so scary 
probably the cheapest tickets are around 80 and then go up from there. And they're gone immediately. What do we pay? 110 like 100, or something, right? wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I still think is the best way to do Disney. Absolutely. Uh, Jessica Spence says, I'd love to see some kind of stage show, possibly with Scooby-Doo and the gang, or oh. maybe include the Ghostbusters. Ooh, that would be cool. Yes. Yeah, and they've got yeah. that nice big theater there that never gets used yes, to anything. Yes, they have. You're right. Well, they good. could even do a whole new show in the um, wild, wild, no, not the wild, wild west. What is it now? Why can I not think? Sinbad's. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They could like totally put a whole new show in there because that's not being used either. No. We heard the Matt Hoffman stadium being used, didn't we? Did we? We could hear rehearsals and things going on in there. I just think it's, that should Probably be Probably a used. cheerleading squad. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Uh, Chris Rook, uh, Rookie says, uh, two things spring immediately to mind. First, a, tr a Simpsons Treehouse of Terrors themed element. I think you'll find that horrors, Chris, but alright. It's Treehouse oh, yeah. of Horrors. Oh, yes. Horrors, oh. Terrors, it's all the same. Uh, go with the fun and absurdity of the classics segments. Secondly, let's have some spooky Scooby-Doo action, please. Again, lots of classic ghosts and monsters to choose from, but mix the gang in and maybe a fun sleuthing game treasure hunt element to it. Hell, I'd hmm. go. Take it easy, my pin. Interesting. Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> yes. Could you imagine, though? A treasure hunt? Uh, but also having that reveal where the mask's taken off and somebody's revealed, like the Grinch or something like that. That could be quite funny. I wonder where they would lie with being able to pull characters like the Scooby and the gang over from studios into islands. I wonder if there's like a licensing hmm. issue or something where they can only be in studios yeah because you could have like woody well woody is occasionally yeah you rarely. could have vampire woody and winnie like you could roll you know, out you could a bring lot the simpsons of or, uh, the simpsons well you could bring the simpsons or you could bring over the, the Fli flintstones is what i'm trying to say yeah popeye bluto like bull rocky and bullwing let's get all those old characters because that's what people go nuts at mickey's not yeah. so scary for like the one over in disneyland is those mm -hmm. rare characters that you haven't seen ever hmm what are you gonna say chris yeah no, no, just reading what he's, you know, put down. It's it's very weird we never got anything really from like the Simpsons Treehouse of Horrors. Yeah. Um, just because it's it's such a big thing. And I know they're not gonna do anything now because right. Disney owns it, but but prior they had so much opportunity to do something there. Yeah. They could have really pushed into that. Um, next we have Johnny Sheps. He says it would be cool if they did a treat trail similar to what they do at Oogie Boogie Bash, which is in Disneyland. Maybe some rare characters from the franchises in the parks. Yeah. Mm. I mean, a lot of it writes itself, doesn't it? You'd expect them to do like do the castle projection show, put the Death Eaters back mm -hmm. over there, like the Wizarding World. But Because I always remember going to, obviously it's Halloween Horror Nights and not something like this, but going to Halloween Horror Nights that first year we went, and I'm convinced there was scare actors in the queue for the mummy that night we did there it was. at Horror Nights. There was. I'd like to see them do stuff like that. Not Because obviously, like, theme Kong out a little bit more I spooky. Was, yeah. Yes. I mean, that's scary as hell, to be fair, that queue anyway. But you could put, like, you could bring that scare actor back into that thing. I don't know how kids would... I mean, they did it in the... Oh. They did it during the day, I suppose, for the longest time, so... Put... put um flickering candles in the eye holes of the skulls yeah that's simple and effective mm -hmm. you know yeah, or just putting like putting some of these characters on the rides as well that would be cool yeah i know i forgot what park does it for a horror-based event where there'll be like zombies on the roller coaster with you <laughs> oh, dude that that's i cool. want that job oh, i yeah. need awesome. to see that that's amazing interesting yeah, so over from the theme park duo, uh, they wrote in uh, complete cat in the hat takeover. Complete catimonium of it. Nice. Uh, Until but, Gabe brought this. But seriously. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Uh, but seriously, I feel as though the IP in IOA that aren't already represented wouldn't really work. So maybe creating an original story surrounding port of entry and some type of villain. Um. It could be the guy that like burnt down the fire department. Yeah, him. escaped from the uh, yeah 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 from the prison. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. this gives Universal an opportunity to spread its wings detached from the IP. That's true. Yeah, yeah. that gives you part of entry and um, 
Lost Continent. Yeah. Because there's no attractions in there. You've got that whole area to play with. Port of Entry already has yeah. a backstory. Yeah. And that ship that created that area would have been filled with all good people. So, and why not just go classic Halloween? Like, yeah. you know, just keep it all classy. Don't even worry about the IPs. That's a great idea. Because they did trick-or-treating, didn't they, in the park, like COVID year. Um, in Islands of Adventure, yeah. Yeah, they did like little trick-or-treat trails mm-hmm. in Islands of Adventure. I can't remember. The, it must have been 2020 when the parks opened back up. It was either that Halloween or 2021. I can't remember. Very briefly. It'd be cool to keep it all pirate-themed, you yeah. know, with the whole uh-huh. islands and the lagoon yeah. and it being a port, um, like the, a, a fun pirate-themed Halloween event. Yeah, because yeah, those pirates are already it, in it Port of Entry. It was 2020, by the way. It You're was, right. yeah. Because you've already got the pirates yeah. in Port of Entry. Zombify them mm-hmm. up. That would be cool because they're awesome. Those girls are amazing. Yeah. I'll make them pirate yep. ghosts. Yeah. Um, and a treasure hunt to go along with it. Yeah. Perfect. Mr. Royds, Jeff says, Jurassic Park should have the people in the raptor suits walking around and chasing people like they do in Japan. Yeah, that blue rip in the in the actual area oh, would wow, be yes. awesome. Yes. Um, Marvel should do their Marvel zombies from the comics, which yep. I've already said. Part of entry, have pirates welcoming the families. We're yep, on the same page. Go. Leave Dr. Zeus alone because his wife will throw a nutty again. Only if you've got a, <laughs> only if you've got a Ouija board. Uh, the whole lost continent could have a Sinbad theme with skeletons and witches and wizards roaming around. Perfect. Hogsmeade yeah. Village, Death Eaters and Dementors, of course. Um, Skull Island would be hard because if you did the natives on the island, it would be seen as racist, I guess. Um, and Toon Lagoon, just have the characters out or trick-or-treating and have fun. Yeah. Mm. I just I wish they'd do yeah. something over there. It wouldn't cost them a lot of money, I seriously. So. And it would bring them a lot of revenue. Yeah. yeah. Let's face and it. Remember, it's a ticketed event, so yeah. they can spend the money. Yeah, and, and I'm, exactly. I'm pretty sure Disney don't pay a cent for the candy that they give out. Probably not. No, no. because it's all branded stuff. Yeah. Yep. You know, and also, I mean, the leave Doctor Seuss lugs his wife will throw a nutty again. We could see changes because hasn't she passed? Oh, I don't know. A few years ago. I think so. Yeah, two or three years ago. Now I think it was. So we could see changes allowed there. Okay. Like what? A new ride. That'd be awesome. The allowing things. That Mount Crumpet coaster. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Wood. Oh, I'm glad I've got this one. Um, I would love an event that included two main highlights, special lighting packages on outdoor attractions and character meet and greets. Good shouts. Uh, my local Six Flags Park eliminates most exterior lighting on the outdoor attractions during Fright Fest. Can you imagine Velocicoaster, Hulk, or Hagrid's with limited or no exterior lighting or specialized creepy lighting packages? Yes. Mm-hmm. Or imagine Velocicoaster like lime green lighting. That'd be stunning. Or acid green. I just put pumpkins on top of the raptors' heads in the raptor paddock. Or the holding little trick or treat bags. That would be cool. <laughs> Uh, it would also be amazing if they put a universal spin on Mickey's Not So Scary Disney Halloween Cruises and had the different characters dressing up like or pretending to be each other. Perfect. Even if it had to be limited to each land for licensing reasons. Can you imagine meeting Spider-Man dressed up as J. Jonah Jameson? Oh my God, or the other way around <laughs> would be <laughs> amazing. Or the Grinch in a Lorax costume. There could oh, be hilarious set piece interactions here. Yes. I love that. Uh, the idea. Grinch with the with the Lorax's mustache would be amazing. Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and he would twiddle it. Yeah. Like a yeah. That would be cool. Okay, I'm yeah. liking that idea. That's really good. Yeah. You're welcome Yeah, I actually do like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, Melanie Barber says if Universal decided to go with the not so scary family event I think it would be neat to see them really diving into characters in the different lands like themed to Jurassic Park Harry Potter or just Port of Entry instead of scare actors fill the different parts of islands with not specific IP characters just make you feel like you're walking through a movie scene based in those areas if that makes sense yeah yeah it does yeah I'd love to mm-hmm. walk through Hogsmeade and feel like I was intruding on the wizarding world. That's one of the things I said when we first started this podcast that that area misses. And I know they couldn't do it because it's always rammed with people, but just have generic witches and wizards yeah. wandering around shopping and interacting with you. It would be yeah, amazing. Carrying spell books mm-hmm. or a cauldron yeah. or rushing with a letter to the owl It'd post. be awesome. And, yeah. I would pay big bucks just for that experience alone. Like just... A night completely immersed in the Wizarding World, yes. where it's completely very limited tickets, 
and they like theme it out like crazy, like you just said. Yeah. I would pay money for that. Yeah. Honestly, just thinking there, what I think what would be great would be if they closed off the the Wizarding World of Hogsmeade. So it was literally you had a ticket and you got in. And imagine if they just put like a big long banquet table out in the main thoroughfare and it was like a big Halloween feast. That you know, <laughs> that would be really cool. You could even go further and and like you said, close it off make an after hours ticketed event and make it literally like either an escape room or some kind yeah. of like LARP or something where yeah. it's you're living out your dream in, mm-hmm. in that world. Mm-hmm. You could have, uh, you could That'd have owl cool. handlers. They did as well. Yeah, that would be cool. They did a thing back at Disney at Hollywood studios many, many years ago where they had dining events inside the attractions. The one that remind that, that springs to mind very specifically was, um, they had like a, a a a load of different tables set up throughout the great movie ride. So you had oh, like yes, um, you had your starters at one section mm. and then your main course somewhere else. That would be amazing, by the way. Uh, yes, that is super cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and they charged a pretty penny for it. To be fair, of course, as well, but yeah, I would pay it. I yeah. would pay it for something. Can like you that. imagine like the, the hogs, uh, the Hogwarts castle having like your starters in the room of requirement and. Your wow. main course in the Defense Against the Dark Arts room or whatever. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Super and then you take the Hogwarts like, Express over for the main course. Oh, yes. Yeah. You could charge a fortune for it yeah. as well. Because, I mean, they do it at uh, the Warner Brothers Studio too, don't they, for the holidays? Yeah. Uh-huh. They have like a Christmas thing there yeah, with a big banquet. Yeah, it's bloody expensive. They do a Valentine's one too. Yeah. You can have uh, some desserts and coffee on Forbidden Journey. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. While the rides move. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about the coffee, but... Yeah. All right. Uh, Grain Boyd says, uh, we went to Not So Scary last month. Uh, what would be good is that they do the opposite of Not So Scary, i.e. the universal characters are dead or deformed. Um, there are not treats, only tricks. What would be good is that numbers are limited, just like Disney, so the park is enjoyable. Yeah. I love that. Which I, I like have that. to argue and say that Disney has gotten really bad at increasing their numbers allowed. It was for still, these nightly tickets. It was still because, quiet. Uh, when I first started going to Mickey's Not So Scary, it was so much more dead than it is now. But so, but us but, going this time, we never come. We never waited more than what twenty five minutes for anything that night. Yeah. Yeah, but I think are you talking more about? Because I'm assuming we did it before you were taking Chris around to go do trick or treating, right? Uh, yeah. Well, not just trick or treating. I just mean in general, yeah. the, all the wait times yeah. and everything, just uh, crowds in general. Like there, it, it felt like it used to feel like there were no crowds at all. Okay, seriously, like even just walking. Weird. Uh, but anyway, hmm. uh, Cody Whitecamp says first off, I'd like to see a lot of general Halloween decorations throughout each land in IOA, specifically themed to each land. Yes, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd love they to just s- do that anyways. D- yeah. Like they do it for Hogsmeade. And like you look at the holidays when they, they put all the like very specific holiday decorations up in Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. I don't well, understand why they don't imagine, do it in a lot of imagine the other lands. pumpkins have got like the green goblin's face on. Yeah. Hobgoblin's face, especially because he throws the pumpkin Perfect. in the ride. Yeah. I'd also love to see some special party only characters in the lands plus specialty themed food. I mean, we know they can do that. Mm-hmm. We're going to get on to some of that in the next few weeks and probably have some very interesting conversations about a certain corn dog, but we'll wait for that. Uh, also, a yeah. Halloween-themed Hogwarts castle show, which they do anyway. Mm. Not this year, but they sometimes yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Leanne Lassard, um, I'm sure this will be popular. Again, but Scooby-Doo and the gang will be sick. Something with all the monsters that have been seen throughout the series, as well as a gang dressed in Halloween costumes. They basically have everything they need already, so it wouldn't be super hard to do. Thank you. I like the sea yes. kender, but you have to go and see Scooby and the gang to get you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we know they can help out. Yeah. Oh, we do. Cool. I wonder if they could like totally retheme Kong to Scooby-Doo just for the party. <laughs> Probably not, but... <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, though. Um, okay, uh, Nicole Hunter. I hate that it's pretty similar to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, but for families and islands, I'd love to see pop up mini walkthrough in each island featuring unique fall lighting packages, themed decor including fall leaf gardens and pumpkins throughout, trick or treating spots with candy passers dressed themed to their island. Yep. Yes. 
Dark Art Show on Castle with Death Eaters roaming, Raptors roaming through Jurassic, Port of Entry characters roaming, themed foods similar to HHN. Uh, later hours, yes. So yes. we can see those awesome lighting packages. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Use Lost Continent Amphitheater and Toon Lagoon Amphitheater for themed spooky shows based around monsters and other original shows. Fog on the Lagoon with a laser light show. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Yes. Yep. Uh, Grayson and Albers says, here are my thoughts on the idea. Hosting an extra ticketed event will likely be a deterrent. By telling people, hey, if you want to enjoy the parks after 5 p.m. during September and October, you're going to have to pay extra. They're going to be accused of worse price gouging than Disney. Right. Let me just stop. Let me just stop there. Let me just stop there because I read this email. Uh -huh. I read this message when Grace and I was ready to get into this. Right. So this is why I specifically said on non-Halloween Horror Nights night. So effectively, for most of September and October, You'd have this going on in Islands of Adventure for two nights. Yeah. And so while those two nights are going on, you've still got the studios you can go into for whatever time that closes. Then the two, the, the five nights that that's not on, you've got Horror Nights going on in the studios and you've got Islands open till late. So you don't have to, you're not specifically wanting... So what he's saying is that you're gonna get, that they're gonna get blasted for the only way you're gonna get to visit those parks after five p.m. is if you buy a hard ticket event for this or a hard ticket for Horror Nights, and that's not the case. You'd still have five nights in Islands and two nights in Studios that if you weren't doing either of these events, that you could still be in the park after dark, basically. Sorry, Grayson. There you go. Uh, all right, I'll I'll add to that after. Um, Alternative, alternatively, uh, you offer some sort of Halloween itinerary for families that is included in the daytime tickets. Uh, even if it doesn't stay, even if it doesn't start until later in the day, you offer it to people who don't want to go to HHN and still want to enjoy Halloween at the parks, but don't have to pay extra. Uh, trick or treating costumes, and this would be only at IOA and not during HHN, and extra characters, etc. The current little boo hunt and some extra decor at All Hallows Eve Boutique is not enough to qualify for that. They'd really have to add some extra theming. Disney has an advantage of four parks. They can host Mickey's Not So Scary at Magic Kingdom and keep the other three parks open. Uh, if Universal decides to close both of its parks for ticketed events, then they would be shooing away many of the guests and leave a bad taste in consumers' mouths. And it wouldn't solve the overcrowding issue at HHN. Uh, in fact, it might make it worse. Uh, just my thoughts, although like most things, I could probably write a whole research paper on this topic. Yeah. Um, I f so you're, you're, what you said about having one during those other two days that HHN isn't open and then flipping it back and forth, that's actually a good idea because it does take away from the, I can only experience you know these parks after a certain price, yep. or I'm sorry, after paying a certain price. But just to kind of play devil's advocate in there, there's also a really, really good opportunity, I feel, for a lot of families. And this is coming from, from someone who just you know went up with my family, um, where my, my niece, she's three now, so they didn't want to take her in this year. Um, and so my mom stayed out with my niece while the rest of us went to HHN. I could see it having both open because there'll be families that, let's say you have two kids and you know, they want to go do this and your grandchild's with, you know what I mean? Where it's, yes. you have these two different options where you would be drawing in these large crowds and like, okay, you guys go to HHN. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm scared of all that stuff. So I'm going to hit up this park and do, you know, Islands of Adventures, whatever they want to call yeah. it. So mom and so dad I, I really take the teenagers to Universal Studios for Halloween Horror Nights and Nana and granddad take the grandkids to, Sub that. I'm not Woody's, taking my grandkids to that. I'm going to Horror Nights. Woody's not so scary. Hello, I'm talking about when you're about 19. Yeah, so am I. Friggin hat. You can't yeah. walk around that friggin' park now. What are you not going to be when you're 90? So you've com you've converted and now it's going to cost me a friggin' fortune. Now I've got to factor in a f***ing ECV. When I so it's annual passes, it's Russia Fear passes, it's flight, hotels, spending money, ECV. Hey. It's good. It's a good thing. Now it's you're not, not pushing a, a wheelchair. No. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's a really it good thing. It cost me $70 a, a wheelchair extra. Not, good. Not, if not if you buy it. 
ahead of time and yeah. it's just with you for the whole week. It's not that expensive. Exactly. It's like a hundred bucks for the whole week. You see, you, see, you know, let's hope I don't actually become properly disabled because oh, you see what sort of carer he's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great, I mean, I think yeah. it's a great idea to have a family event because like from my perspective, I do have a lot of people that try to leave the kids at home to come to HHN um, or they're having trouble leaving the kids at home, but they're like, you know, I feel bad because there's nothing really for my kid to do while I'm there. But this way, mm -hmm. you know, everybody gets a little bit of some things. Like when Krista was too little to go, I brought a friend with us that would stay with her while Audrey and I went into yep. Halloween Horror Nights. But then if they're like the next night, there's no HHN, then we could all go in yep. the islands and do the family event. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we used to go to, and do Disney's Mickey Not So Scary because there was nothing like that. But that was like Krista's fun night. So yep. it, it's a no brainer to me. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of a lot of families, it's easy for them just to go like, hey, grandma, you're coming on this trip with us because you're going to have the kids yeah. over at this park or the aunt or the cousin or just somebody who doesn't care about horror. They're just like, I don't want to do that, but I'd gladly go into the parks for a not scary event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was the whole point of, like I said, doing doing the Islands of Adventure one on non Halloween Horror mm -hmm. Nights night. So you're not so you're not putting a pay you're not putting those night hours behind a paywall for everybody it yeah no, that I, makes I'm, sense a lot i'm gonna be interested to see what happens when epic opens because i think that's gonna change horror nights i don't think it will to a degree i think i think they're gonna to have to they're gonna to have to expand it they're going to, i think something like this could end up being the cards maybe an epic see I, see I thought about this when i put this question out and this is going completely off topic, but Epic doesn't lend itself to something like this because every land's separate off the main hub and it's not a circular thing. You're in and out. I don't, I don't, I think it would be too much of a logistical nightmare because you then can't, you can't well, govern one area. Epic, the thing is though, if you did like the kids version of it, it's going to be smaller. It's still right? Super Nintendo world. Right. But also... It's not going to run late because you've got the hotel then. You cannot disturb your hotel guests too late. So there's got to be a cutoff time that's going to be earlier than Horror Nights. Maybe. Well, and what is in the land between the hubs? So what if they Maybe. built structures just for HHN and coaster. opened up pathways between the hubs yeah. just for HHN, creating a loop where we're not having to walk 10 miles to the back of a, you know, of a ride to you, get to a parade building. I don't think you will ever see anything Halloween Horror Nights related at I Epic Universe. So Horror Nights, I'm talking about... Yeah, but Michelle just did. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think it makes sense to create, I like, don't go think... ahead and put that into the plan. No. That would be amazing. They're not going to want to on their brand new park by putting infrastructure in for an extra ticketed event like that when it's already already set up for it at, all, at, at Universal Studios Florida. No, I They're going to want that. But that. I wonder how much they lose by not renting out their sound stages during HHN months. But then, like they literally cannot use it once. Once they have to input all of the, you know, build the sets into those sound stages, they are not rentable. I don't think they care. I think they make more than enough money yeah. off Halloween Horror Nights mm -hmm. to cover that entire year. But why not make Plus, how money many sound off stages of those? are we talking? About? Like four, if that. I don't. It's like it's like I, I think it's very telling that, that they that they are going to be taking down said pop-up tents to make physical structures yes i think that's, that's telling a really of good point it's yes. not going yep. anywhere yeah there's just it's the same as minion land not being part of halloween horror nights this year it's the same it'll be the same thing with epic universe maybe down the line but i can guarantee you for the first 10 years you won't see anything like that they may do something in monsters land who knows because it's already kind of set up for you but i can't see them putting any sort of infrastructure in a brand new park i could see and them taking doing, away from it i could see them doing little cutesy trick-or-treat trails maybe yeah. during the day yeah you know, kids. Yeah. You know, you get a wristband for it, but not putting a whole. Who knows? Maybe they'll you know. maybe they'll do a family friendly event think, at Epic. I think they will. I, I think, mean, I I do think that the size of Epic. I just think it's have, a brand new. To, even if it's like I say, it doesn't have to be after hours. It could be something that's during the day. I I'm, just, a, I'm expecting there's going to be like green areas as well, so they could have things set up there for families as well. I do kind of agree with Lee that where I don't think we're going to see anything there for at least five years like Maybe it's not. it's the brand new state-of-the-art park uh -huh. that thing's going to be slammed without yeah. any oh, kind yes. of promotion without any kind of events so they probably won't even care 
but it does the park itself does lend itself i think it does it lends itself better to hosting horror nights than the two other parks just because of its hub and spoke design yeah you mean a family you event to, or a horror night oh, i'm just going i know it's not going to be horror nights but i'm talking okay. about horror nights but it also could be anything because because you have that said you know hub and spoke it's much easier to traverse to lands you want to go to as opposed to your islands where it's a giant circle. You yeah. want to get to the other side, you're going to have to walk half a park to get over there. It's mm-hmm. true. But again, with it, but like I said, my, my thing is it, it's a brand new theme park. They're wanting to show off the brand new land, and- the hotel, the hub, and they're not oh, going to yeah. want to sully that by putting a Halloween Horror Night in there and taking away from what their brand new state-of-the-art and, theme park and is. And we've already got, what, summer of... 25 as the opening yeah so yeah you know, it's definitely it, it, so like a month or two after after opening it's going to be halloween season so True. they're not going to be doing anything no. the first first year for definite no, that's for sure. anyway yes let's get back on track Susie scott says it's all about the candy and the characters yes an attraction overlay would be fun too yes absolutely i agree with that uh, Nicole Hubs, something centered around Halloween, fall, universal movies, IPs, like a friendly version of classic monsters. <gasps> classic monster kids. The monsters, the Adams family, do they have the rights the to them? Chibi classic monsters. I need that now. Chibi. Chibi little cute, like almost like pop vinyl, like okay. character type things. Yeah. Big eyes and big heads and oh, so cute. What are the little characters that they that um yeah, like they make the, um, at Universal? Screamers, screamers. the studio yes. screamers. Yeah, the yeah. screamers. Yes. That, that would be, be actually really cool. Oh, screamers. Can you imagine like a little marching parade of monsters taking the kids off around a little loop? I just hope they don't do that little boo with a body because it's weird. That's creepy. Yeah. It's very disturbing. It's strange, yeah. isn't it? It's just like little boo Wait, should not have a hang body. Hang on. Hang on. Does that mean that little boo is related to David S. Pumpkins? Mm. Maybe because it's kind of hmm, interesting. Christina Frundell says uh, they would have to do something Scooby Doo themed, of course. Uh, a mystery gang themed maze area or show sounds adorable, and all the different villains are so iconic. Uh, they could also do something with Casper and Paranorman, yes, uh, because those Absolutely. are Universal Pictures too. Yes. yes. <laughs> Paranorman would be amazing. Yes, is yeah. Monster House a Universal movie? I think it is. I haven't. We haven't seen that actually. No, we haven't. I've never movie. seen Paranorman. Lee, you haven't seen Paran? Watch it. It's amazing. Lee fought me against yeah. Paranorman for about three years. Me and Jade and Raymond were all like, "Oh my god, it's so good! It's so good! Watch it!" No, no, no. Then he watched it. See, I love so and like a, like a, the production company that does that. So, oh, I, I, have Leica. you seen Coraline? That would be awesome. Uh, I haven't, but it's one of Alexa. Alexa loves that movie. Right. So, so same, even... same company. Um, Box Trolls, Paranorman. Kubo. Uh, Kubo and the Two Strings, which is phenomenal. And, uh, the Yeti um, one. Oh, it's called. Missing Link was Frank the last one they did. No, Frank and Weenie's bloody Disney. It's Tim Burton. Oh, isn't it the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, watch... If it, the Paranorman is phenomenal. Kubo and the Two Strings is amazing. Um th- and to be fair, Coraline would make a creepy just something said, yeah. as well. Yeah, if they could get the licenses to them, they would be phenomenal. Yeah, even Box Trolls sounds like something that's friendly. <laughs> it's kind oh, of it's kind of creepy, trolls. but it's very sweet. Yeah, I'd be up for them. And Casper, let's be honest, Casper slapped all over the merch uh, yes. for Horror Nights for about the last ten, but not there ten years. It's such a weird thing. So we had this explained to us, didn't we? That it's. Because it's like a license-free character or a character they they have license to use, they just use it. So do you know what? Just project Casper onto buildings. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I would. Mean, I, would still hope that. I would argue even Gremlins could be family-friendly if they don't like make the Gremlins too scary. Gremlins was never family-friendly. Oh, no, Gremlins oh is God. not family-friendly. Yeah, it's Gremlins not. Get scared of that. Yeah, like, so put that a female gremlin. gremlin is terrifying. Yep. And when they put it in the blender and it's split, yeah, ah, that's not. why I said but you have to smoothie. not do that stuff. Like, it, don't do the like super scary stuff. But gremlins is kind of cute. Yeah, it really isn't. You want just what's you want his to watch face it out there? Um, Gizmo. Yes, Gizmo. Yeah, yeah, but he's not a gremlin the whole time. He's a mogwai. Yeah, a bunch of little gizmos. But mogwai. that's not gremlins, then. That's mogwais. That's true. Because he got to turn into a gremlin. Yeah, I think. 
uh, uh, projections, like projections on the buildings mm-hmm. in part of entry, like pumpkiny ones and stuff like that yeah. would be awesome. Honestly, I still want them to do um, that projection mapping in Hogsmeade. I've, I've always said for Diagon Alley it works better, but do it in Hogsmeade where it, it, it looks like it's been destroyed, which would be uh-huh. amazing. Yeah. I would just love to see Scooby-Doo themed, but villains just running around literally with a sheet over their heads. Yeah. With cut out eye holes. I think that would be hilarious. So make it comedic. Because I'd love that. If this yeah. turns up at Universal next year and a lot of these ideas... We want free tickets. You know where you know where they, hurt, where they got the yeah. ideas from. I want a Ghostbusters ghost hunt. Yep. Where you can pay to rent a Ghostbuster gun and there's like little ghosts throughout yeah. the park that you can shoot and gain points. And if you shoot them all, you get a prize at the end. You don't get slimed. Free ghost. I will walk out with that gun. All right. Exactly. Oh, back. you could pay extra to get slimed, actually. That's what Ugh. she said. And hug the marshmallow man at the end. Yes. Well, that went. We got way <laughs> more content out of that than I was expecting. I'm yes. glad I came up with that. <laughs> Pat yourself at the back there, why don't you? Have you met us? <laughs> Let me throw yeah. this question out to you guys. Universal has to have sat down and had this conversation. Oh, yeah, right? probably. But so we're talking Surely. about all the things they can do. But here, I'll throw it out to you guys, see what you think. Why haven't they? Yeah, mm, because possibly they don't want to take away from Halloween Horror Nights. Halloween Horror Nights is their thing, and they don't want to dilute it by having something else that people might have to make a choice. We've already talked about it tonight, about how expensive a Halloween Horror Nights trips become. And maybe they they don't want to dilute their Halloween Horror Nights audience by giving them something similar to do, and then people have to go, well, I can't afford both. What do I do? Also, you've got to factor in, you've got at least two IPs there where permissions are not going to be given to use those licenses. So you've got two areas that you've got to somehow navigate pass-throughs to get to the others. I mean, they've done that for Horror Nights when they've done Horror Nights there before. So there's obviously a work around it. Because when we did Horror Nights in 2004, there was a house down Doom Alley. I can't for the life of me remember where where the entrance was or whatever, but we were in Marvel because that's where we got our faces painted uh, in Marvel Superhero. So we went, like Marvel Mm -hmm. was part of it, but there was no theming or anything there that I remember. But if you remember, Zeus Landing was pitch black. I'd say I don't remember. There was because we got a really good scare coming out going into... um, Oh, the Lost Continent. Lost Continent. Yes, I do but remember that. But it was pitch that. black going through. There was nothing lit. I wish I remembered that. I year. have no recollection aside from like the, the cornfield to take you between parks. Well, and then yeah. I remember was... Jurassic Park having some really good scares in the... I don't remember just anything wandering around. Jurassic Park. It wasn't one of the crossovers in Zeus Landon. It was that one, the Field yeah, of Screams, because the... you went through where the double gates were. Yeah, where we had photos taken. Yeah. yeah. That was where Field of Screams was. Yeah. That's where the whole don't plant corn because if you plant corn, there's a fucking hurricane coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, they didn't plant corn this year, but look what happened. They did. I think a reason, they're, probably the biggest reason Universal hasn't done a family friendly event is because they tend to not try to compete with Disney. That's true. So, yeah, they yeah. They've Disney. been pretty vocal. Yeah. They've been pretty vocal about the fact that they are their own thing yeah. and yes. they are the specialists in what they do, and Disney can be the specialists in the kids' stuff. Um, and I really, I think that's probably, that's probably their biggest factor is they just, they can leave the kids stuff to Disney. See, I, I 100% agree with you. It's well, funny. I don't know, in recent years have changed that. It's funny because they did. About eight, eight or nine years ago, they started looking. There was little things coming into the parks, the Superstar Parade, little things like that where the, I think the, the, started down that road of wanting to compete with Disney for that family-friendly market and then realized that, yeah, no, we can't. We're just going to build Velocicoaster. Which we much prefer. I mean, I think they can. I don't think they can. I, 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 totally, I totally think that they could be fine with doing a family-friendly event because more and more families are coming to these parks. I mean, I can see amongst my own clients in the past 10 years how, how the fam- family dynamics have gotten younger and younger. Um, so I think that they can, I just don't think it's going to be, I don't think that they need to need to try to do it like Disney. I, need to, I think they need to figure out their own, their own I family the conver- friendly yeah. thing. I think the conversation changed a bit once from, you know, go back five years till now where 
you're you're not going to Universal for one day, right? Now it's they're mm-hmm. trying to compete with Disney. Now they're not trying to compete and take away their clientele in that aspect because they will never be able no. to compete with Disney on a children level. We know that. Uh, right. Bride based, uh, IP based, all that stuff. But with that being said, they want to compete at a price level. They want to compete at a, a length of stay level and all that. So you have to give these options because you are alienating certain people mm-hmm. that go on these vacations, especially during October and September, yeah. where it's there are plenty of people that just go to the hotels at nighttime. Uh, uh, in September and October, they're packed with families and kids because they yeah. have nothing else to do. That's, but then that's a missed opportunity for but, Universal. Nah, that's their own stupid fault for going at that time of year. Like it's Halloween. No, but what I'm saying. Well, no, it's no, not. They're stupid. Other, like they, no, no, they're, they're they're coming there to do Halloween there's, Horror Nights, and they're coming there to do Mickey's yeah. Not So Scary Halloween Party. Yeah, but what Chris is saying, and, and, the and, hotels saying, are packed because there's people who can't do anything else during the night because they're not there for Halloween Horror Nights or whatever. Well, the kids aren't. The kids are. So, like, certain parts of the family are, and then the rest are just kind of hanging back. Because I'm, I'm going, I'm thinking, like, bigger than just, like, Alexa and I going or a family of four. There's, like, very large parties that obviously go. So there's a, I just feel like there's a very big missed opportunity on their end not to take advantage and be like, okay, instead of just, you know, giving your dollars to Lowe's and not us, give it to us by this event we do over here. Like, I, I think there's an opportunity there for it. And no, I don't think they should try to directly compete with Mickey's Not So Scary. Put their own twist. Do their own thing. Of course. Their own twist. Not exactly. So Scary is, is, is geared towards families, right? But also towards very young kids. Do the universal thing where you gear it towards that right over the cusp of like like very Tweens. young kid, like five six, yeah. What a, just a different age gap or do something different. They can do it. Um, it's just it's weird that they haven't. Or maybe that's going to be a different conversation a few years from now. Who knows? I mean, the worry is that a lot of people have talked about how young the audience for Halloween Horror Nights is now skewing. It's younger and younger yeah. all the time. I mean, I know people who took their two year old recently. I I will say. <laughs> I mean, we took our niece last year. She was two. Exactly. You don't get much younger than uh, that. This year going, this year going, I will say, I noticed a much larger influx of of young kids. I noticed more strollers this year than I ever have. Yeah. Let's just say that much. If they ever enact a child swap for Halloween Horror Nights, I think I'm going to have to boycott. I thought you were going to say I'm going to have to bring a kid. No, I'm going to have to boycott. (laughs) (laughs) Um, because that's exactly what's happening. I saw lots of people that had strollers there and there was like one parent sitting out with the kid, obviously some were just chilling, waiting for the rest of the party to come. And I bet they probably switch or they decide which houses, which parents are going to do, you know, they figure it out. But, um, yeah, I, I agree with Chris. There's a missed opportunity there for some revenue for sure. And just to clarify, Brian, Michelle wasn't talking about you there. People with strollers, by the way. Those strollers are very Um, welcome. The yes. bourbon baby. Bring all the strollers. <laughs> anyway. Right. Ooh, all yes. right. That was a fun episode. <laughs> it was. Yeah. All right. That is going to end this podcast, which means it's time for Universal Is. And this one comes from Thomas Burnell. So we will see you next week. But for this episode, Thomas says Universal Is My Money Pit. Mm-hmm. Catch you next time. That was another episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. The best and only podcast about Universal Orlando on the island. Check us out on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. For all the podcasts, news, and articles, check out our blog at UUOPodcast.com. Contact us at podcast at UUOPodcast.com. Join the Producers Club by emailing us at UUOPproducers at gmail.com. Listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Check out our friends, the Theme Park Duo, for all your other theme park news, and email Michelle at portkeyvacations.net to book your next trip. So until next time, this is Amity Six, call off the Marines, we're coming home.